Welcome back to the channel, my friends. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and today we're taking a look at the return to the Battle for Macrog. This video is sponsored by CMO Games. More on that later. Sunday preview. Return to the Battle for Macrog. One minute, it's December 1st, and the very idea of Christmas seems like a distant dream. Then you close your eyes, and it's Christmas Eve. Nevertheless, tomorrow is Christmas Day. The next week is New Year's Eve, which means no new pre-orders for the Warhammer web store. But that doesn't mean there's nothing to look forward to. We've got online treats coming for every day for the next week and a very special made-to-order that goes on, and a very special made-to-order that goes up on the big day tomorrow. And there's a little video here if you want to check that out, but uh, we'll take a look at the full article. Warhammer 40,000 Battle for Macrog Made-to-Order Wrap yourself in a cozy blanket of nostalgia with this special Christmas Day made-to-order release, which recreates the classic Battle for Macrog from the box set to the launch of the fourth edition of Warhammer 40,000 straight out of 2004. The set contains 35 plastic miniatures, the Imperial Pilot, Lieutenant Varus, 10 Space Marines, 6 Gene Stealers, 8 Spore Mines, and 10 Termagants. There are also 17 pieces of terrain, 6 Objective Markers, the Wreckage of Crashed Imperial Lander, and 6 Infestation Nodes. Alright, so this is an OG starter set from back in the day, 2004, and it's going to go up for Made to Order. The set will be available to order from 10 a.m. local time on Monday the 25th of December, so that is tomorrow, until 8 a.m. GMT on Tuesday the 2nd of January 2024. As a made-to-order product, they may take up to 180 days to ship. So you have one week to order it starting Christmas and ending on the 2nd of January 2024, and it is another one of those made-to-orders, so it could take up to six months. And we've talked about this in the past. I don't think this is a bad idea. I actually like the idea of this. Games Workshop has obviously had some trouble with its manufacturing. Over the last couple of years, they have basically like stayed at capacity. So this allows them to essentially get a bunch of money in advance. And then when they have a chance, when they have like a little lull in production, they can just like slap these old molds back on, spit out however many box sets they need, and it fills the gap so they don't have any like halts in production. Now, I don't know how necessary this is, as it seems like they just stay at capacity, but I do think it's cool that they're offering up all these made-to-order sets. Now, I personally picked up some of like the Wall of Martyr stuff when they did that recently, and like the Imperial Bunker, the Landing Pad, all that stuff. I ordered quite a bit of that. I haven't gotten any of it yet, but it's only been a few months, and I thought that was a really cool offering. This one, for me, is a lot less exciting, but I do like the idea that they're doing this, so just because this one doesn't really appeal to me, I'm not really like a sucker for nostalgia like a lot of other people are. When I'm buying up like these made-to-order things, I'm buying them up because they're hard to get, they're expensive, and I want them, but for the most part, the stuff that I'm buying is stuff that you like can't really find. Now, in this case, the terrain is still pretty hard to get here, but there's no shortage of like old, terrible Space Marines, Gene Stealers, or Termagants. And then obviously we just got like brand new models for the Termagants, the Gene Stealers, and then also the Spore Mines as well. There's about a million of these old terrible tactical squad marines floating around, still like even in new condition. So realistically, the appeal of this set for most people, other than like nostalgia, would be if you're really trying to get a hold of the Imperial Pilot, or if you're after the terrain. And I do think this terrain is pretty cool. There's not a ton of like these larger pieces of like scattered terrain in production at the moment. I'm really a big fan of like the stuff that came in Octarius, all like the orc like crash, like rubble and stuff like that. We obviously saw some really cool like Imperial ruins and everything like the crash statues and all that stuff as well. But that stuff's pretty hard to get at this point in time. So I really do like that this terrain set is coming back here. The actual models themselves, much less appealing to me, like I said. But again, I do understand why people want to pick this stuff up for like the nostalgia purposes. And I think that's really who it appeals to. Because the fact of the matter is when I look at the models, I don't get excited to like paint up stuff from like the 90s or 2004 if there's like brand new models that are like much better. So that being said, just because this isn't for me specifically doesn't mean that I don't like it. And more than anything, the most important thing is I love to see them reprinting this old stuff. Now, there's a long list of stuff that I would much rather have seen them reprint than this. But every time they reprint something like this, it just means there's an increased possibility that what comes next is going to be something that I'm really excited about. So while this doesn't necessarily appeal to me, I love the idea of it and I can understand how other people get excited for this, especially for like people that this was like their first set when they were a kid and maybe they lost it or sold it or whatever over the years. So again, like it really pulls on like the heartstrings and like the nostalgia. So I get it. So I will be interested to see what the pricing is going to be on this tomorrow. And if anything, it just gets me excited for like the Imperial landing pad and some of the Wall of Martyr stuff that I've ordered, knowing that it's just one day closer. So let me know what you think down below. Did you have the set when you were younger? 
Does this excite you? Is it type of thing that you would want to pick up? Are you more excited for the terrain, like I said? Or do you still think it's cool to like get a hold of some of these uh, old miniatures as well? Always like to hear back from you guys in the comments. Now a quick message from today's sponsor. CMO Games has been selling Games Workshop products online for over 20 years. They carry the full line of Games Workshop products, including Warhammer 40,000, Age of Sigmar, Necromunda, Blood Bowl, Paint Tools, and more. Almost all Games Workshop products are priced at 15% off MSRP. CMO Games takes pre-orders for most Games Workshop products released at their earliest date possible. 12.01 a.m. on Saturday, they go live. Most of these pre-order products are also priced at 15% off MSRP. CMO Games offer free shipping in the U.S. 48 with an order of $50 or more. Their customer service is top-notch and they ship most orders within 24 hours. Visit CMOGames.com using the affiliate link in the description and let them know that you heard about CMO Games from Warhammer Man. Now, back to the video. All right, and then from Warhammer Plus, while you're recovering from opening all those presents and eating a feast fit for an ogre, chuck into some quality videos on Warhammer Plus Battle Report. The group stages of the Warhammer 40,000 Arena of Death Tournament commence as we watch the biggest names in the 41st millennia battle to the death. So that's pretty cool. The battle report is basically just going to be like head-to-head -head matchups of some uh, pretty awesome like characters or legends. Lots of Primarchs, Bellicor, all that good stuff. So that could be fun, definitely. And then we see a little Lore Masters and some Citadel Color Masterclass as well. Lore Masters takes a look at the Striking Scorpions. The Citadel Color Masterclass takes inspiration from these long, frosty evenings to teach us how to paint Winter Camo Scheme for Kasserkin. You've also got until the 30th of December to watch a bunch of free Warhammer Plus shows. There are two animations to enjoy. A group of Battle Legion Terminators are tasked with recovering a Xenos artifact by Abaddon the Despoiler, himself in Hammer and Bolter, while a tech priest helps the ragtag group survive against a Gene Stealer cult Impatience of Iron from Angels of Death Origins. And this is the watch for free from the 20th of December until the 30th of December. And uh, that was the things we just talked about right there. So opportunity for people to get a little taste of Warhammer Plus if they haven't subscribed yet. Pretty cool. Nice little offering from Games Workshop. There's also last year's Christmas themed episode of Battle Report, Kill Team, Shred Till You're Dead, as well as a Citadel Color Masterclass on how to paint the Golf Rocker and Lore Master on the Dark Angels successor chapters. We're off to hang our stockings and finish all the last minute preparations, but you won't be without articles to read on Warhammer Community in the gap between Christmas and New Year's. Tune in tomorrow for a huge reveal, followed by something special on Boxing Day. Throughout the week, there will also be teasers of what's coming in 2024, as well as the results of this year's Miniature of the Year vote. We hope you all have a Merry Christmas. So a very cool big reveal tomorrow, or should I say huge reveal? I don't know if that's a pun, like something large, or if it's just going to be something really cool, uh, but definitely excited for that. And I got to say Merry Christmas to Games Workshop and also to each and every one of you. Hopefully everybody had a great 2023 and 2024 will be even better. I know as far as Games Workshop is concerned, the models that came out this year, the books, the lore, all the offerings from Games Workshop have been absolutely amazing. I have to say this is definitely one of, if not the best year so far for Games Workshop and for us as fans, customers, etc. I think the Leviathan box was probably the best box Games Workshop ever produced. We saw the launch of 10th edition, which is absolutely awesome. A new way to play the game in Combat Patrol, which has been a load of fun. The Dawnbringer books for Sigmar and all the new miniatures that have come this year, the characters, all that stuff has been absolutely amazing. And for all the side games like Kill Team, Warcry, Warhammer Underworlds, and then of course Legion Imperialis, this year has been by far the best. So not to say that it hasn't been without flaw. Obviously, there were some issues along the way for 2023, some releases, getting a hold of some of the things we wanted. The new website is pretty bad, but hopefully it's going to only get better from here. But we'll go ahead and wrap it up there. Merry Christmas from me to you. Happy holidays. And of course, Happy New Year as well. You won't be seeing any interruption from me on the daily videos. And as always, if you do enjoy those videos, if you have something to share, please do so in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe. And a special thanks straight from the bottom of my heart to CMO Games for sponsoring the channel all year long. Check out that link in the description to save 15% on Games Workshop products with free shipping in the continental United States. And make sure you tell them that Warhammer Man sent you, as their partnership has been an absolute blessing for not only me, but also my family and the channel. So that's it for today. Warhammer Man Studios, I'm Warhammer Man, and Merry Christmas. And I'm out of here.